giant NFM morning show as we welcome uh, Dr. Hawk to Doc Talk. Brought to you by Wiggle on Health. Good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm hey, doing great. Doing great. Uh, well, remind everybody, tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been with Woodlawn Hospital, and uh, what uh, what's your expertise area? Sure, I'm the general surgeon. Uh, I work with Dr. Nile at Woodlawn Hospital. I've uh, been here for about now uh, nine months. Okay. How's the first nine months going? Wonderful. Fast? <laughs> yes, it is fast. Yeah. Uh, that's for sure. All right, what's today's topic going to be on? We we're going to talk about colon health. Okay, colon health, that's uh, kind of important for uh, men as we get a little older. Yes, uh, actually uh, it, it is a, it's, it's becoming younger. Okay. Um, um, uh, there's an organization, there are a few actually, um, the main one being uh, United States uh, Preventative Services Task Force. Uh, they did a number of research for a number of years and uh, there's an alarming rate of what's called early onset colon cancer. The colon cancer among young people and uh, particularly aggressive types are increasing. Mm. Now therefore, uh, colonoscopy is uh, the first point uh, I want to make is the colonoscopy is now recommended at 45. Okay. It's, it's no longer 50. Uh -huh. And uh, yes, we see more and more aggressive type of colon cancers in younger folks. Hmm. What, 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 is, uh, what are they saying the reason why it's younger now? Excellent question. So uh, there is, we don't know yet why. Uh, people have different theories, mm -hmm. uh, no research proven theories, but diet, uh, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, a uh, number of things. Um, smoking is increasing among young people. Um, one of the uh, misconceptions out there is that smoking only causes lung cancer, which is not the case. Mm. Lung cancer is the most common cancer yeah. caused by smoking. It, smoking significantly increases chance of colon cancer. Mm. Okay. But these are all hypotheses. We don't know yeah. why. Yeah. Interesting. So obviously then as you see some of the younger patients, uh, you remind them as they get to that uh, 45 mark now that it, it's time to get tested. Absolutely. And uh, folks still think at 45 they're relatively young. Why would they need a colonoscopy, etc. And um, I continue to remind them that it's a very, very preventable and a very approachable way to prevent colon cancer. Yeah. Obviously you, you see on TV and you hear different things. There's uh, not only the, the colonoscopy, but there's those boxes out there that you can get sent to you and then you can do it at home and send it in. And do it. How accurate are those? Another excellent point. Uh, <clears throat> the first statement I want to make is colonoscopy is the gold standard for screening and mm -hmm. prevention of colon cancer. There are other modalities, methods, but they're not considered substitutes by any means. Okay. So there are some what's called biochemical testing. One of them is what's called Cologuard. Cologuard tests DNAs of all polyps and colon cancer cells have altered DNA. Mm. You know the DNA mutation causes cancer. Okay. So it detects those aberrant DNA and gives you a read. Ah. And there's another test called FIT, F-I-T, fecal immunotesting. Right? So the, that test detects the presence of a minute amount of blood in stool. Very accurately tests for hemoglobin. Okay. Actually. It, it looks for hemoglobin in blood. So, but those tests have an accuracy rate. You know, uh, the um, Cologuard, they will say that, okay, we detect about 94% of uh, cancer overall. But once you start looking at polyps, you know, well, particularly those large polyps, the definition of large polyps is any polyp that's larger than one centimeter. Mm. That's what the larger the polyp, the more the chance of getting cancer. They're not as good as colonoscopy mm -hmm. in terms of detecting these polyps. So really the polyps are what is what causes the cancer then, or leads to it? Overwhelming majority of colon cancers rise in the setting of what's called adenomatous polyps. There are some cancers um, that rise in the absence of polyps, okay. or at least polyps too you know, small. To and, see. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and remember, if a cologuard it comes back positive. You have to have the colonoscopy anyway <laughs> to remove the polyp to look for the right. suspicion, right? So I always advise people there is no substitute for colonoscopy. Now, certain people they cannot tolerate a colonoscopy, or a colonoscopy cannot be completed because the colon is, you know, strictured or too what we call tortuous, meaning too twisted. Okay. In that case, there are other modalities, you know, right. CT or 
and a barrier minimum. That is understandable, right. but colonoscopy should always be approached first whenever possible. And obviously, uh, just give your office a call and, and uh, they can get you set up or do you check with your uh, normal uh, physician and then they reference that? Um, I, you know, I do colonoscopy, Dr. Nile does excellent colonoscopy. We have a few other physicians, uh, Dr. Aldridge, um, Dr. Ricketts, all those physicians are wonderful. They do colonoscopy too. So there are a number of ways uh, to, uh, to Woodlawn Hospital awesome. to get a colonoscopy. So obviously that's the big push, obviously. I mean, if early detection is, is huge on that as well. It's everything. I mean, colon cancer is entirely treatable if it's detected early. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so. So obviously, yeah. Now let's say somebody's 40 to 45. They're not quite at that 45 range, but they have family history of it. Should they think about that as well? Excellent point, excellent point. Um, you know, everything we talked about so far is for what's called the average risk individual. Uh, you know, we do risk assessment. Colonoscopy has two things in terms of timing, which is the, you know, when we do the first colonoscopy and then the repeat surveillance. So these are all screening and surveillance colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. So when you do the first one and how often you do the, first, the, the repeat all depends on the individual's risk profile. And we, there are a number of questions we ask during history gathering. And if somebody in the family has, um, you, know, you know, known first degree relative, X number of them, yeah. would co or if somebody has a bunch of polyps in the last colonoscopy, somebody has other risk factors, um, certain gene mutations, we always, always do them sooner. And uh, one general rule is that if somebody in the family has colon cancer, then we do it 10 years before the onset of diagnosis or at 40, okay. which, whichever comes sooner. Gotcha. And some, there are some diseases, we start screening them in their early 20s. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and we do it more frequently. Yeah, because of the family history. Yeah. Family history and their own no. personal history. No, for personal. example, people with ulcerative colitis, you know, they have a near 100% chance of getting colon cancer. Mm -hmm. And we start screening them very um, early. Yeah. Obviously, if uh, you're 45, you get your first screening, everything comes back fine, when would your next one typically be if, if you're a, an average normal person? Average normal, uh, average risk individual with a normal colonoscopy will get a 10 year bill of health. Okay, cool. So obviously it's, it's one time and then if everything's good, you're, you're back in 10. Yes, and that 10 year is not at random. Right. The reason why the 10 year happens is because a, a most polyps, there are some exceptions, uh, there are always exceptions. There are always, always exceptions. exceptions. So most polyps that started out today will take 10 years to become an oh, invasive okay. cancer. Okay, so that makes sense. Why the 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. But again, everybody's different and uh, yes. again that goes back to some of the questions that are answered. Yes, uh, exactly. There are certain types of polyp, they're called serrated polyps. And because they look, they're called serrated because in the microscope they look like sawtooth. Mm. Saw teeth. Uh, they take significantly lower. So if we see that those type of polyps, and there's certain other polyps, not all polyps are treated equal. Right. Certain polyps have more malignant potential than others, uh, and then we bring those patients back sooner. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's a big push uh, now. You say 45 is the new magic number for it, where it used to be 50 several years ago. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Want to make sure people understand that and get in and get those tests. Absolutely. I had my colonoscopy yeah. at 45. Yeah. And, yeah. Anything else this morning? Um, lifestyle is very important okay. in terms of colon health. Uh, eating adequate f uh, food with fiber, leafy green vegetables, avoiding processed carbs and processed meats, uh, refraining from smoking, all these will lead to good colon health. Yeah, and that's that's a good, the start of it. And then you get checked out and make sure everything's good and, and then uh, if there's issues, then you address those as needed. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, there are many other aspects of colon health we didn't uh, today, we didn't have time for them, didn't talk about other diseases. One of the main ones being diverticulosis, mm -hmm. and diverticulitis, but perhaps... That is probably one of the most popular. I've, I've heard that several different times oh, uh, yes. with, with people I've talked to. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's a result of our Western diet, and uh, uh, well, fortunately, diverticulosis does not lead to colon cancer, but it does, uh, in cases, lead to diverticulitis and colon perforation, 
and uh, it can bring about a lot of misery for the patient. All goes back to those polyps. <laughs> well, the, the diverticulitis is not due to polyps, it's what, what's called ticks. Okay. It, uh, uh, small areas of weakness develop in the colon. And I think you and I, we go back to the generation. Do you remember those uh, old bias, like non-radial tires back in oh, okay, those days? Yeah, yeah. And when the tire wall would get weak, uh -huh. there would be sort of like a blister on the tire with bulge. Yeah. It's the same concept, when the colon gets okay. weak, a sort of bulge develops mm. in the colon. And stool accumulates there and becomes hard and it can perforate okay. and cause uh, you know, significant infection, sepsis, and uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that makes a pretty good uh, explanation there. I've really never, you know, thought of how that uh, worked like that. But yeah, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So obviously, you want to get all che all that checked out, and you can do that easily yes. at Woodland Health. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Make your appointment now, right? Oh, I want everyone. <laughs> to your phone's going to be it. ringing off the hook. You're well, going to be busy. There are other doctors who do it very well, <laughs> yeah. but I, want, I, I, I don't want anybody to get colon cancer. Yes. At least die from colon cancer. Well, Dr. Hart, thanks for coming in and uh, giving us uh, that information, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, talking to you again soon, I'm sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Hart with Woodland Health here on Doc Talk here this morning.